Optimal design of a novel spherical scissor linkage removes center of motion mechanism for medical robotics. The objective of this work is to design a mechanism that is able to be used as an ultrasound probe holder for breast examination. In the breast examination procedure, we need to access the whole surface of the breast. So theoretically, we need the mechanism to have a full hemisphere as its work space. Obviously, the mechanism within the workspace should be singularity-free. As the first step of development, we want to use our mechanism passively, but for further development of the work, we consider that it would be a privilege if the degree of freedom are decoupled from each other. To guarantee the minimization of the positioning error, the total stiffness of the mechanism should be high enough. To achieve our goals, we adopted an RC mechanism working based on the concept of a spherical scissor linkage. In a spherical mechanism, all of the device links are curved and are constrained to move on a spherical surface which is defined by the radius of the link. In this work, the number of links and their arc angles are designed in order to cover a full hemisphere. The mechanism has two degrees of freedom. The first one is theta 1, as you can see in the right figure controls the relative angle between the two curved links in first stage of the mechanism, which provide a circular planar motion for the mechanism. The second one is theta zero that rotates the entire mechanism along the common axis of, of it and provide a 3D motion for the mechanism. The left figure shows the starting configuration and the middle figure shows the final configuration of the device. In order to eliminate the dead lengths of the conventional scissor linkage, we designed the mechanism to consist of uh, various stages which are arranged in a cascade manner. Actuators stay in a fixed position on the mechanism base. Two criteria of the mechanism are considered as a performance indicator and we are trying to optimize the device dimension based on these two indicators. The first one is the total mechanical stiffness and the second one is kinematic isotropy. The mechanical stiffness defines the relation between the external forces and the amount of deflection of the mechanism. In later slides, I will explain the calculation procedure of mechanical stiffness using the visual join method. The Wellman kinematic isotropy index quantifies the directional uniformity of the manipulator an isotropy index close to 1 indicates the uniformity of the mechanism performance. In virtual joint method, elastic deformation of link and joints are modeled using virtual springs located at joints. The axis of the virtual spring at each joint is normal to the link's bending plane. As you can see in the left figure, the deflection of the curved beam is modeled with a spring at the base and the axis of the spring is normal to the bending plane. The parameter of virtual joints that are related to external force applied to the system also contribute to the forward kinematic formulation and should be considered there. For more clarification about stiffness calculation in later slides, we categorize the mechanism joints into three categories of active joints, virtual joints, and passive joints. As we mentioned before, two degree of freedom of the system govern the mechanism motion, which are theta zero and theta one. Those two degree of freedom are called active joints. Each flexible link is replaced by a rigid link which is connected to the previous link by a torsional spring. The joint parameters corresponding to virtual spring are called virtual joints parameter and we use gamma to refer to them. All other joints in the mechanism structure which are driven by the active and virtual joints parameter are called passive joints and they are denoted by capital psi. The forward kinematic is derived using DH parameters, the DH parameter of the active and virtual joints, which are the generalized coordinate of the system contribute to the forward kinematic equation. The passive joints parameters can be calculated based on active and virtual joint parameters using analytical equation. To obtain analytical equation related to passive joints, the mechanism is separated into two branches, left and right one, as you can see in the figure. There is a repetitive pattern for DH parameters between stages of the mechanism. The DH parameter for the first stage of the left branch are summarized in the table. Gamma 1 and gamma 2 are the deflection of L1 and L2 links and psi 1 is the passive parameter which is the angle between L1 and L2. By using the standard homogeneous transformation of the left branch and the right branch of the mechanism separately, 
And given the fact that the end effector position in both the left and right branches in each stage must be equal, we can extract an analytical formula for passive parameter at each stage using the star equation. You can see the final analytical equation here. To derive the mechanical stiffness, we use both kinematic and static equation. The equation 1 is the relation between F, that is the external force exerted to end effector, and tau gamma, that is reaction torque in the virtual coordinate. From the other side, we have the Hooke's relation that relate the reaction torques in virtual joints to the virtual joint deflection defined by equation 2. By combining these two equations that result in equation 3 and replacing delta gamma with equation 4 that comes from the kinematic, we can have the final relationship between the external forces applied to the end effector and the end effector deflection in equation 5. Finally, the global Cartesian equation of the mechanism can be obtained using equation 6. K gamma in this equation is the equivalent stiffness of a curved flexible beam that is subjected to the bending force at its free end while the other end is clamped and can be calculated using equation 7. The Cartesian displacement of the end effector depends on the displacement of both the active and virtual joints. Equation 1 describes nonlinear kinematic relation and the second one is obtained by taking the derivative from the first one. To calculate the total Jacobian between the end effector displacement which is delta P and the active joint displacement that is delta theta, we need to use a static equation and virtual joints that is equation 3 to get the relation between delta theta and delta gamma. This relation can be obtained by taking derivative of equation 3 that result in equation 4. Combining the second and fourth equation result in the relation between delta P and delta T, which is the total Jacobian of the mechanism. We have used this Jacobian in later slides to calculate the global isotropy index. The condition number of the Jacobian can be used as a performance index that characterizes the amount of error amplification from the joint space to Cartesian or end effector space and it is ranging from 1 to infinity. The manipulator called isotropy when the condition number is equal to 1, which means the manipulator has identical movement performance in all directions. The manipulability index, which is the inverse of the condition number and ranging from 0 to 1, is used to evaluate the mechanism performance through the workspace. The manipulator or mechanism is called isotropic when the manipulability index is equal to 1. Given that the manipulability index value depends on the manipulator configuration, a global condition index, GCI, is used to calculate the kinematic performance that is the average of isotropy index over the workspace. The maximum reachable angle in mechanism workspace theta max is found from the arc angle of link beta and the number of links in each branch that is denoted by n. Given a desirable theta max, there are many options to choose a pair of beta and n. The left figure depicts the mechanism stiffness variation and right figure shows GCI index variation across various possible pair of n and beta. Based on the stiffness map left image, it can be seen that given a fixed workspace line, a structure that has a larger number of links and a smaller beta is stiffer than a structure with a fewer number of links and a larger beta, with this assumption that the joints can be made perfectly rigid. Based on the isotropy map, if n is increased with beta decreasing in proportion to n such that theta max remains constant, the isotropy index will remain constant or grows slightly, and also if beta expands while n remaining fixed, the isotropy index will initially increase to some maximum value and then decreases. To find the optimal pair of beta and n, a multi-objective optimization problem is solved. The best curve angle is 18.21 degree. A prototype of the proposed mechanism with curve angle of 80 degree was built. To experimentally validate the spherical workspace and forward kinematic of the mechanism, an electromagnet tracker was attached to the center of the end effector of the fabricated prototype. The angle theta 1 is changed in discrete steps in the range of 45 degree to 80 degree, 
And in each step of theta 1, the device was rotated about theta 0 within the range of minus pi over 8 to pi over 8, while the end effector position data was measured by the electromagnet tracker. The contour value in the left bottom figure describes the difference between the real position of the prototype's end effector and the ideal position from forward kinematic calculation. The maximum error is around 8 mm and that can be the result of the unperfect prototyping. But generally, the result indicate that the workspace of the fabricated prototype device closely matches the design workspace and the correctness of the forward kinematic calculation is verified. In this slide, a video is presented to show the mechanism functionality. As you can see, it is able to move over the surface of the hemisphere while its RCM point is the center of a sphere. You can see the whole video in our YouTube channel. Thank you for your attention.